Ooh, what a day. Welcome back, guys. January 27th. Friday. Week is over. What a week. I didn't do a video yesterday. I'm going to recap what's going on with that. My positions. BBY, GME. An update on those. Spy. Hit our, hit our price target perfectly. Why don't I listen to myself? Sub up, like up, comment down. Happy Money sticks around. Follow us on Twitter at Happy Money YT. Follow us on Discord. Link for those in the description. They're both free. I'm going to give a quick recap on yesterday first. BBBY tanked midday. Um, they defaulted on their loans. Maybe it's old news. Maybe it's not. I'm not certain. But it looks like JP Morgan's basically margin calling them and saying we want our money back. And they're increasing the interest on it 2%, which isn't much. Um, but that news potentially was what sold this off. That's what the media is saying. Even though that writing came out in the 10Q that was came out yesterday and it came out like here, like 1.30 or something long before this. Not sure if it was mainly being read and they were slow on it or if that was all just a cover for this dump. So not sure on all of that. Um, I did close. I closed out of my cash card puts on BPBY yesterday here, uh, somewhere around here after the bounce. I couldn't close out of the shares on the TD account because I had a covered call on it. So I actually closed out of the covered call on the shares today up here. So I'm out of BBY at this point. Um, too much uncertainty for me. If there is a merger and acquisition, great. Maybe I'll ride it at this point. Uh, it's just speculation. So uh, yeah, SPY continued to rip up. Freaking called this rally from here. And anybody could have called it. It was easy to call. But uh, what just happened? Oh, I just <laughs> I just bought more calls. All right, let's go. Uh, I just got a triggered order. Hold on. OK, um, yeah, we called the rally from there and, and a lot of people did. I'm sure it broke the resistance that had been setting up here on that green candle. It would have been so easy just to go along here and just go on a vacation for two weeks and then close it up here at 408 and be up, you know, 30, 40 grand. But I didn't, I traded in and out and actually lost money somehow. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Don't overtrade, don't overthink, stick to your plan. Um, any rate, SPY continued to climb up today. Uh, I've been calling out this 408 if it hits there. Yesterday on stream I was calling out a lot, like if we break 406, I think we're gonna hit 408 today. Hit it right on the nose and I said I'm gonna short if we hit it, so I did. But not to say I didn't take some stupid shorts and longs on the way. Um, but now at 408, I did take a short on the ES. I did the MES. I don't have margin for a big ES anymore. Traded away too much. Um, I will have a mental stop loss. Not going to set a stop loss, but uh, I think if it does break this 408, it's, it's, at a, it's at a breaking point. So if it breaks this, kind of holds, then it very well could we keep going. Unless it's a false breakout, of course. But at this point, I want to open, have the short and leave it there. Next week we have FOMC, we have Powell, we have lots of earnings. Could move the markets a lot. If it does break here and FOMC is dovish, Powell's dovish, earnings aren't too grim. Uh, next leg up would be 412, I see. Uh, that resistance right up there. And then honestly, like we could just keep ripping. If it's if it's backed by FOMC and Powell, Powell basically gives the green light to rally because inflation's fine and he doesn't care anymore about jobs or whatever or anything then maybe even a move like all the way back up to these highs. That would take some time, but uh, would be a pretty epic rally. So we'll see. Uh, at this point, I still think it's probably going to reject here, but there is the bull case that we have broken that trend line, that downtrend line, and depends on where you draw it, but I think pretty much where anybody draws it today and yesterday fully broke it. And it's somewhat used as support even back here. I was pointing that out. My trend line before actually was down here. I kind of adjusted it to be even more conservative. Um, so it's possible that we are starting an uptrend here. Uh, even if we do come down in the next couple days, I would, I would be looking for a bounce somewhere on this trend, uh, to see if it breaks back below it, then yeah, we'll probably make new lows. Uh, but it, it's possible we just have a move down and start bouncing there. And that would be bullish for sure. Um, GME, big move up today. Yesterday, let's see, I missed, didn't do much. Oh, it is still, it is still tethered in the the BBBY and AMC basket, GME. So this was this was when BBBY just got crushed yesterday. It pulled down GME, uh, BBBY halted, and this was this was all that happened during that time. So tons of volume, tons of dropping. Uh, I don't know how anyone can explain 
explain that and explain that there's not some sort of basket swap theory going on where these are tied in with some sort of uh, leverage and swaps and t tied together somehow. AMC also same thing, exact same time when BBI dropped, these dropped with volume. Um, but they recovered much better than BBBY. Uh, yeah, and then today, today, what a day. So I was bearish, more or less coming into Friday. Um, I figured our window for a cycle to start was over. And so yeah, I was bearish coming in. I had actually a lot of puts. I had like $1,500 in puts for next week. Uh, should have closed them on this drop. They were up 50% here. I was up like 700 bucks on them. I tried to close some, they didn't fill, and then I just left it alone. Take profits, take profits, take profits. Um, anyways, so held those, and then today, I was pretty fortunate though, all, all being said, about here uh, on GME, it was melting up with SPY a little bit. Nothing out of the ordinary though, I was moving up to VWAP, and then it started to break VWAP here, and that was right here on SPY, where SPY was rejecting that high. And then it's and then these two five minute candles picked up in volume and it was broke VWAP and that's right when Spy actually had those two red candles, and to me that was the trigger to go long. Uh, I immediately closed those puts, uh, tiny loss on them I think about break even and I started opening up calls right there for next week 21 calls uh, on this candle, and continued to slowly just to see if it was confirmed because the inverse on Spy increased volume and these candles just looked different and it it I could tell it was gonna make a move um and then also bought back into shares uh yep back in so started accumulating shares here and here and basically all the way just all the way to here it takes time we've got lots of brokerages and i'm not just doing full orders i'm doing 100 shares 200 shares 300 shares at a time uh kind of going slow with it i guess but yeah i basically went full port on it in this range uh about I mean, a cash available, not full port. I mean, I have other stuff, but cash available was like 70 grand uh, within within this price range. So mostly in shares, but then I also have some call exposure. Um, so yeah, I and then the price action today, this first move up to 22 or whatever, I think it's a buy move up. I actually have a short on ES up here, so, or MES. I think it'll be fine though. I figured it's gonna retest, but I wasn't sure. And whatever, it's a couple points. Um, this move up was was looking good. This was looking more squeezy, more might lose control. Volume was getting good. It was moving quickly. Started consolidating, which is good, good sign. And then after that consolidation, it breaking this, it was much more subdued and just kind of was showing its cards a little bit on what kind of rally this was going to be. And it was strange. It looked more like Monday rally, which when we first saw this, I thought this is it. This is the beginning of the cycle. We're going to move up to 3540 next week, the week after it's it's coming. Um, and then the second kind of half of the day for this, while this is very good natural looking price action, um, it just made me a little bit skeptical of a huge move up just because of what we saw on Monday with it doing that and then it not starting anything and just flattening out. So um, kind of both both sides of the coin there. I, I do still think that this could be the beginning of it, but I am uh, I will be quick to probably be closing. Uh, calls and maybe shares on monday uh depending on what it looks like what kind of volume looks like where it opens at um i think this could possibly open up 100 percent on monday or down maybe two percent you know so if it's down a bit and there's not much volume and velocity the upside yeah i'll close calls first probably hold shares a little longer to see how it plays out but um yeah i mean it's, it's looking good so far we've got a big green engulfing candle um on the daily increased volume it did break this resistance uh it'd be nice if it closed above here we've got about 30 minutes to close it'd be nice if it closed in the 22 above 22 because we've got 14,000 volume on there that was probably all uh, a lot new a lot of new open interest on that strike so and then the 21 14,000 12,000 the 20 so probably a lot of open interest if it closes above uh definitely 21 but 22 would be really good uh, and that would also kind of confirm this breakout of these levels here. So I don't know if it's just a mellow dead cat bounce and uh, it's not we're not in any cycle and we're just going to kind of get back up to this equilibrium range of 20 to 25 or wherever it is, 22 to 30. You know, I don't know if that's it or if this is the beginning of, of a move like this or like this. 
Um, really too soon to tell. The signs are there that it could be a big move, but uh, Jimmy's moved differently. And I think in the next probably week, by next week, we will know if Jimmy is, uh, is a different play. It might be a different play altogether. Um, just the way it reacts and the way the way I'm going to trade it. Uh, I'll probably have a good insight by next Friday. So very exciting. Um, since I closed all the BBY, I had tons of capital and that's how I was able to get uh, get the 70 grand in shares. I just kept buying shares. I'm like, wow, what's happening? Um, but not to say I haven't lost a lot of money on GME. I've lost much, much more than that. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, let me show you guys the trades or the positions, I guess. Um, so some of, some of those shares are actually probably on margin even. Wasn't really paying attention, but I do get some margin on Fidelity. Uh, since, uh, yeah, Fidelity still does give margin, so I have some on there. These are the ones I opened up here today on Fidelity. It was uh, these right here. I think tell it's highlighted. And then it's... So I opened 1,950 shares on Fidelity today. They're up 10%. A lot of wash sales though. So with the wash sales, let's say my cost base is 26. I'm still kind of confused how that, that, I mean, I understand how it works, but on the long side and if I'm in the money or if I'm profitable, I don't, don't quite get it. Oh, I forgot IRA. No, no, I didn't. Okay. I have IRA also. So open up IRA. I didn't even count those before. So 325 in the IRA and then 1950 in those. And then in this account, yeah, getting close BBBY and got a thousand shares here. Oh, I also picked up EBTL shares today. They had 2 million volume, which could be a sign of a rally coming. Um, and then, so those are the shares. That was about the 70K. And then the calls I got, they've fluctuated. These were up like 300% at one point. They're coming down. I actually can't close these because this account dropped below 25K because I'm using margin for futures. Uh, yeah, anyways, so I open these and I can't close them. Um, same with the shares in some of these accounts, so I'm kind of stuck in it till Monday. Uh, otherwise, I, I was planning on closing these today, at least some of them, and maybe re repositioning on Monday, but it's all right, ride or die, like, I, <laughs> not really ride or die, but um, we, it's possible we have a gap up. Unlikely, but possible. The, the IVs come down on these, it's crazy, it's only 100%. So we're back into like, good low IV. So. I'm, Shouldn't get a whole lot of IV crush. Um, but yeah, those are up. I mean, that's up nice. 848 bucks. Was up like a couple grand before. What happened there? That's weird. Oh, they they grouped them weird. Oh, they regrouped them. That's what it was. Those aren't the calls. These are the calls. 21s. Oh yeah, okay. It grouped those weird. So I actually got puts for margin for next week. So yeah, the, I got 15, 15 here and then six there. So 19, 21 calls for next week and then 12, 22 calls for next week. Then these are protective puts for next week. Um, a hedge, but also just to increase my margin. Spies holding up well there. Uh, Lucid had a crazy rip up today. Huge volatility, halts to the downside, halts to the upside. Is up, I think almost 80, almost 100%. It was on speculation of a takeover from a Saudi Arabia company or something. Crazy move on that, though. Very interesting. Um, BBBY at one point, actually, so this was interesting. When Jimmy started rallying today, like literally on the minute, or close to it, BBY tanked. It looked like it was going to do another move like yesterday with bankruptcy news. Um, and I was wondering if it was trying to suppress GME. I'm not sure. I still don't know. It didn't really. I mean, it's it did a little bit, but then it moved back up. So, uh, media came out with something about uh, they couldn't find they can't find buyers for bankruptcy. I don't I don't know where they're getting this from. I mean, I don't think they I don't think they dropped. Uh, I don't think Bed Bath dropped any kind of filing to say that. But it, this just was circling around media. They're having trouble finding buyers for bankruptcy. Yeah, struggles to avoid liquidation. So I could be FUD. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, I don't like the risk. So yeah, lot, lot, quite, quite the week. Uh, spy next week. There's a lot of data. We're at that high. It's either going to break out and confirm 
more of a bear market rally squeeze or we kind of hit a top and we're going to either consolidate or just come down rather quickly. A lot of earnings, a lot of everything's converging next week with uh, macroeconomic data mixed with earnings. <laughs> so quite the week. If you guys haven't jumped on our uh, streams, you should hit the notification bell. I've been streaming all day and showing my trades. It's a little more difficult. It adds a little to do it in front of people. It's it's tough, but it's fun. It was fun today. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good weekend. We'll see you on Discord or Twitter spaces. Okay, peace out.